come and praise the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Glorify the Lord. He is worthy. Worthy is the Lord. Father. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you all for coming out, you know, to the house of worship. It's a new year, so hopefully that this is a beginning for all of you to continue to come and praise the Lord. Exalt his name for he is worthy. Yeah. Uh, we want to welcome you out in uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook. Um, thank you for joining us. We would hope that you would come this year and fellowship with us. Come feel the presence of the Lord. Come feel the love of God. We welcome you. You know, you really, we really want you to come. So uh, as we begin, I'm going to open up in prayer. But first I want to read a scripture. Because this is why we're here. We're coming here to praise the Lord. We come in to exalt him. We come here to give him thanks for everything that he's done. And Psalms 96 says, Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. The heavens declare his righteousness. So why should we not? Re uh, rejoice in the Lord, you righteous you're righteous, right? He made you righteous. Jesus Christ made you righteous. Therefore, so you come to praise the Lord. And give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Amen? So as we worship the Lord, give it to him. Give it all to him. Everything you have. You know, if you want to jump for joy, jump for joy. If you want to cry, cry. If there's something that is troubling and hindering you from worshiping our Father, it is time to give it away. You know, give it away. Come, come. What they, what's that song that says? The uh, river of water? Come into the river of water and exalt his name. So, Heavenly Father, we just come before you today to give you thanks, praise, and honor. Father, we thank you for everyone that you got here safely and on time. We thank you for those that are on their way, that they will have no breakdown. Have, they will have no distractions, no hindrance to prevent them from coming. We've come to worship you, Father. We come to honor and glorify you, for you are only, the only one to be worshiped and glorified. For no man will glory in your presence, Father. Father, I touch, ask that you would touch each and every one of my brothers and sisters here, Lord. That they came if with heaviness, they will leave with joy. If they came with sadness, they'll leave with joy. They come with a hope and an expectancy. You are their expectancy. You are their peace. You are their strong tower. You are their safe refuge. You are their help in time of need. You are the restorer. You are the reconciler. You are the lifter of their head where you have called it righteous because of the blood of Jesus. So, Father, be honored today. Father, open up the heavens that the praise and worship troop will bring the presence of the heavenly angels, the heavenly choir, that it will be a sweet aroma to you, almighty God. Father, so we ask you, Father, receive our praise and worship. Receive the honor that you are worthy of. In Jesus' name we pray.
Cause every war he wages he has won Oh, I'm not backing down from any giant Cause I know how this story ends Yes, I know how this story ends Right now, right now I see Right now, right now I see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord Right now, right now I see a victory Right now, right now I see a victory For the battle belongs to you, Lord I'm here to encourage you tonight, family That we have to be built up we have to be stirred up. We have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has not left us. That God is with us. And if God is for us, then no one can stand against us.
you believe that tonight? That our God is risen. He is alive. He won the victory. He won the victory. Our God is risen. He is alive. Worship him tonight. Worship him tonight with the fruit of your lips. Lift your hands and glorify him for who he is and what he's done in your life. For how he brought you through 2022. Some of you in here didn't think you were going to make it. Some of you in here didn't think that your family or your friends or your loved ones were going to make it. You need to offer up the sacrifice of praise. From the fruit of your lips, from the belly, from the depths of you. You need to glorify him for putting up with you when you wouldn't put up with yourself. Because he's worthy. He's God all by himself. He doesn't need us to be God, but yet he wants us to be his. Father God, we exalt your name. We worship you and we praise you. Because you're holy. And you desire to abide in the praises of your people, Father. So receive our praises, receive our offering, Father. This is all we have, Father. Receive it, Father. For there is none like you. There is none like you. There is none like you, Jesus. Only you.
thank you, Lord, for inviting us and allowing us into your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Father, and we don't stop here, Father. We're going to continue in our praise and our offering, Father. We're going to continue to worship you, Father, with our means, Father God, with the means that you've given to us, Lord. We're going to continue in our worship, Father God. You're talking about a time on a dollar, Father God. <laughs> You're so good, Lord, that we are, we are called, and you, you allow us, and you enable us to flourish in the night, Father God. And we thank you for it. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. You, got, you guys can go ahead and take your seat. We're going we're gonna to give tonight. Amen? It's time for our tithes and offering. Praise the Lord. If you could pull that scripture up, sister, that would be great. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Hug on a brother on the way back. Hug on his sister. Give him a smile. Give him a high five. Oh, they're already all sat. Praise the Lord. So this is a very familiar scripture. It's not something new to the majority of people here. But I'm going to read it, and, and we're going we're gonna to pay attention. Amen? Bring all the ties... Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. I just love this next part, family, because as a minister of the gospel, whether we're ministering to somebody on our job site, whether we're ministering to somebody in front of an AMPM as we're pumping gas, at any given time as we minister the gospel, as ministers of the gospel, we always want to encourage, and then we want to uh, challenge somebody. We challenge one another in this, in the Word of God. Amen? Any ministers in the house? We challenge. So when we minister the Word of God, we want to challenge you with what's been ministered, with the Word of God. Amen? 
And the beautiful thing about God is I don't even have to do that right now. He's calling us out. He's calling you out. He's calling me out. And he's calling the entire church out, the body of Christ. He says, try me in this. <laughs> try me now in this. There's nowhere else in the gospel throughout the entire Bible does the Lord give us an opportunity to, to try him in anything. And he gives us this opportunity. He's challenging us. He's calling us out, family. He's calling us out. He said, come on with it. Try me. Try me in this, says the Lord. Of heaven's armies, in other scriptures, in other translations, it says of heaven's armies. So he's the general calling out the soldiers. He says, try me in this. Come on, somebody. It's 2023, family. We're going deeper. Deeper. God is going to do something incredible when you try him in this. Because this is the time of the service that it gets a little bit quiet. Because if I asked you, has God been good to you? Yes. It all started at the cross, right? We would get real excited. Yes. Yes. We'd be fired up. So let's continue in our worship now. The rest of the scripture says, says the Lord of hosts. He, he's like, check it out. This is what I got. Because there's a promise with commands. He's challenging us, and then he gives us a promise of what he's going to do. Says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will be not room enough to receive it. We're talking about overflow. We're talking about a peace that surpasses all understanding. We're talking about the joy of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. So I want to encourage you. I don't even need to encourage you. You've already been tested. God says, come on, test me in this. Amen? It's time to give. Ushers, if you can go ahead and pass out the tithing envelopes, please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Text give to tithes and offerings. For those of you that maybe forgot your cash or, or, or your card in order to give tonight, and those of you on Facebook land and YouTube world, you can text give to tithes and offerings 714-477-7736. And the children said 714-477-7736. Three, six. Pray over your offering.
to the living God. Hallelujah to the living God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor Joel, you come up here and bless this offering for us, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, as we come to you tonight, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the way that you have abundantly blessed us, Lord, not only financially, but physically, spiritually, in every way, how you've poured out your blessings on Turning Point Fellowship, Father. Father, right now, we just pray that you'll accept this offering, Lord, help us to use it wisely as you see fit. Father, pray that we not only give of our tithes, but we give of our service, Lord, we give of our heart to you, Lord. That we pour out the love of Jesus Christ, not only in our families, but our communities, Lord, that we just give back as you've so richly given to us. Father, all this time is yours now, Lord. Bless your word. Bless our pastor. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and, and release the worship team. Thank you. Thank you, family. Yes, give them a round of applause. They're bringing us in. They're enabling us. They're helping us press in. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Everybody can have a seat. I got a few announcements here, okay? Um, yeah, just a few. Saturday, January 7th. That's in two days from now. We're on Thursday, family. Saturday, January 7th, 9 a.m., Men's meeting. Come on, Fernando. Thank you, Jesus. Men of a higher standard coming together. This is our first fellowship of the year. So we know we're going to not only pack it out, but we're going to come expecting, and God has a mighty word for us. I know it. So come on out. Invite a friend. Invite a stranger. When you're pumping gas, look, I'm going to just share this. I was driving here tonight. And a brother pulled up next to my truck and said, I like your license plate frame. And it's Matthew 6, And he said, could you pray for me? This is at a stoplight, family. This is at a stoplight. I said, I could pray for you. I could go a little bit further. I'm going to bring you to have some breakfast and fellowship with God this Saturday. He said, I would love that. I said, I'll call you, Luke. I got to go. It's green light. <laughs> so praise the Lord. They're out there, family. Invite them in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Sunday, January 8th, the following day we have a potluck. Invite your family. That's right. Give God glory. Invite your family out. This is a great time. We have a, a, the word of God. We bless God. We praise God. We have our service. And then right after that, we all get together as family and we break bread. Amen? Amen. So come on out, invite your families. Saturday, January 14th. Where's the ladies at? There? Oh, come on, somebody. The sisters are fired up. Praise God. Saturday, January 14th, 10 a.m. Bring a friend, bring a sister, bring a cousin or a co-worker. Invite, invite, invite. Amen? Um, we're going to release the children now. Where's all the children now? Come on, let's stand up and give them praise. Those are, those are, that's the future right there. That is the future. CEOs, like Pastor says, CFOs, contractors, lawyers, doctors, firemen, come on. Realtors, praise the Lord. CEOs. Praise God. 
without any further ado, we're going to uh, introduce and invite the man of God up here. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Angel. Are we on? Yeah, we're on. Go and have a seat. Have a seat. Praise the Lord. Uh, man, uh, I don't know if you guys are excited, but I'm excited. You know, uh, uh, this past Sunday was my first service uh, in about two and a half months, about eight, uh, nine months I was out. You know, had two surgeries uh, done in five weeks, man. Uh, and that wasn't even, that wasn't nothing, man, which. What really, I'm going to step away from here, uh, what really kicked my butt was the, the gout, man. I had gout for like 28 days in my knee and my ankles, man. And, man, I'm, right now I'm walking like an old man, man. I'm like, man, what a trip. But uh, God, is, God is still healing me, amen? amen? God is always healing us, amen? amen? Come on, let's give the Lord a praise <laughs> offering. Uh, what the Lord has done. I'm excited. I'm excited because... Uh, when, when you get close to death, you know, and, and God allows you to go on, you know, you, you're like, whoo, come on, Jesus, thank you, Lord, amen? Because man couldn't save you, my wife couldn't save me, my kids couldn't save me, only Jesus could save me, amen? He's the only one that, uh, he had me in his hands, and you told, you said it probably about, what, two and a half months ago, you said, uh, Pastor Angel, the devil tried to take you out, but God had you. God saved you, amen. and amen, and I said amen. Uh, I believe that. I believe that, that God has a, a plan for our lives, yes. for every one of us, and the plans start new every day. Amen. Every day, you can have a brand new beginning, every day. If, if you would just think about it, think about it, that today, Edmonda Jessica, is the first day of the rest of your life. Forget about everything that went behind you. Forget about that. Today, Victor, is the first day of the rest of your life. What you're going to do with what's in front of you, not what's in behind you. Amen? And I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that. Uh, the Lord, uh, I'm going to give you guys a, a date here. September 24th, 1994. Uh, some of you guys weren't even born. <laughs> some of you weren't even born then. That's when I got... Born again. That's when I received the Lord as my Lord and Savior. Uh, messed up, tore up from the flow up. They said things like that. And uh, when I say new beginnings, God gave me a new beginning in my life. I, I was messed up. I was, I was gone. I was lost. I was totally lost. And uh, in a garage, I was living in a garage, and I asked the Lord one, one night, it was the early evening, probably about 4 or 5 o'clock in the evening. And I asked the Lord to save my life. I didn't know what to do with my life anymore. Because all the stuff that was offered to me out there in the world, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Everything that's offered out there is men and women. Amen. Women offering to you, themselves to you drugs, alcohol, a crazy lifestyle, all that. And I chose God. I made the right choice. I said, I want Jesus. I need you in my life. If you're for reals, I didn't know if he was for reals or not. I didn't know that. But I said, if you're for reals, go ahead and touch my life, save my life. And he touched my life that, that day, that 24th, about 5 o'clock that afternoon, I began to cry and whip, whimper like a little boy, like a little baby, like if someone took my ice cream. You know, I was crying and crying, and uh, I fell asleep. I woke up the next morning about 4 o'clock in the morning, and it was totally different. My life was different. I couldn't say, oh, glory to God, hallelujah, praise be to God. I didn't know that stuff. I didn't know how to praise God. I didn't know that. I just knew that from what my father told me, that God could save my life. Amen. He would say, Jesus saves, and Jesus could save your life, me, and he would tell me in Spanish, because that's all he spoke was Spanish. And I accepted the Lord that day in my garage. You can be anywhere you want to be. When you open up your heart to the Lord, he's going to save you, he's going to touch you, and he's going to change you. And God began to change my heart and change my life. And I didn't know the word. I began to study the word. I began to read the word and began to just going to conferences, going to church. I was going to church Tuesdays, Wednesdays, 
and Saturdays and Sundays. I was in church because I had to get something new in my life. And here I am today, you know, God still saving my life. From, from, the tri- from the tricks of the enemy and the plans of the enemy, God had turned my life around here today. So I want to just encourage every one of you that today is your day. Yes. Today is your day. I don't care how long you've been in church, 20 years, 15 years, 10 years. It doesn't matter because some of us aren't saved. You know, I'm speaking to the general, I'm speaking to the general church, the church that's out there, you know. Not this building. This building is what God gave us. This is nothing. I'm talking about to us as individuals that if we would just, with our mouth, profess Jesus Christ as our Lord, you could be in, your, in a ring boxing, you could be in a bathroom, you could be washing your car, you could be washing dishes, you could, you know, wherever you could be on your motorcycle, you know, and you can just say, Jesus, forgive me my sins, come into my life, change my life, and he'll change your life. And uh, here we are today as new people. Speaking new, having a new attitude. We're not perfect. My attitude isn't good all the time. You know, my words are not perfect all the time, you know. But as long as our heart's toward God, that's what counts, that our heart's toward God. And he, and he knows you and he knows your name. That's what's so beautiful and so truthful, right, that he calls your name Martha. And you hear that name, you know, Eddie, Jess. You hear that name wherever you're at in the backyard with the dogs and all that. You just hear like, the heck, who's, t- who's calling me? Mm-hmm. It's God. It's the spirit of God calling me here. Amen. I don't know if you guys ever had that before. Amen. Just hear the voice of God calling you and talking to you. I've heard him many times call my name. And he'll call me in Spanish. You know, say, Angel. Angel. And I'm like, what the heck? You know, but I knew it was him calling me or say, Angel. Angel. You know, he doesn't call me Pastor Angel. He doesn't call me the Apostle Angel. He doesn't call me that. He calls you by your name. He won't call you Joker, Little Puppet. He won't say all that stuff. That's man stuff, you know. You know, that's not. He gave us a Christian name. Every one of us has a Christian name, and that's what he calls you by. So if you hear Joker, then (laughs) joke's on you. You (laughs) It doesn't. It doesn't work. It doesn't. It doesn't work that way, you know. He calls you by your name. Uh, I, I'd like you guys to uh, open your Bibles to Isaiah forty-three, sixteen through twenty-one. Isaiah sixteen, forty-three. I, I read all this uh, yesterday. I mean Sunday. I'm sorry. I read this Sunday, but I read the whole chapter Sunday. And it's about Israel being redeemed. I don't know if you guys know what the word redeemed means. It means that you've been bought. God has bought you back from an area or, or a life area you were, you were in, a, a way you lived, the way you thought. God rede- redeemed you with the blood of Jesus Christ. We have all been bought with the blood of Christ, not with gold. Not with silver, not with precious rubies or, or stones, nothing like that. You've been bought by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He gave his son's blood, his, his son's life for you, Jesus. And I was sharing that earlier today with a young man. I said, your life was exchanged for his, for yours. It wasn't a fair deal, but God said it was. Because for me to be, for Jesus in my life, Jesus' life was much more than mine, but he said we were worth it. I'll do it. Amen? But here he's bringing the the children of Israel back because they were were, uh, uh, disobedient. They, They weren't following the word of God. They weren't following the commandments of God, and they were punished for it. They were punished. Some of you guys believe that Jesus does, or Jesus, God doesn't punish you. But he does. He chastises those that he loves. He won't punish you like in the old days, you know, where you got stoned and all that stuff. And I don't mean this kind of stone. I mean with rock, boom, boom, you know, you got stoned, you know. And here he doesn't put sickness or diseases on us. But what he does is he allows you by your free will to make decisions. And sometimes we make the wrong decision. 
and we want to blame people. I remember going to, to jail and, you know, my dad, my dad, if my dad wouldn't have been that Mexican man he was, man, I would have been all right. No, it was all a lie. God, God set us up for, uh, for, sir, for sir, sir, uh, success. What did it say it again? Success. success. For success. God set us up for success. Amen. He set us up for success. God made you to win. Yes. He gave you a life that is abundant, abundant life, an overflowing life. We just have to learn how to live in it, Victor. Yes. God has already given it to you. Not because I've been a, a, a Christian for 29 years and you've been a Christian for three, four months. We get the same benefits, brother. Right. Eternal life. You get the same benefit I get, brother. And it, we ain't like the union, you know. First, you know, first, uh, uh, what do they call them? The first, uh, first step? First uh, uh, apprenticeship? The first apprenticeship. You know, they get paid, you know, $21 an hour. And then as you get to the journeyman, you're making 38 bucks, 45 bucks an hour. You know, you guys are making some money, you know, serious money. But God is not like that. All the benefits that he's given to us belong to us right now. Yeah. Right here, right now. Right. You're a new creature in Christ. God, wasn't, God doesn't want you to perform for your salvation. He's given it to you already. Yeah. It's yours. Everything belongs to you. But when we fall in love with Christ, we fall in his love, you fall in, fall in love with his word, and you begin to follow his word, it's not going to be uh, tedious. It's not going to be a burden. It's going to be love. The love that God has given us. Amen? Then now we can follow through love, just like you two are in love now. Amen? So he's going to follow, follow you wherever you say you, she's going to follow you wherever you say not all the time, but most of the time. 85% now. <laughs> but you do, when you begin to fall in love with one another, you begin to obey one another. And when you fall in love with Jesus Christ, we're going to obey Christ. It gets tough. We're going to have trials. We're going to have uh, tribulations in our lives, but God will give you the way out. And God will lead you through that if we would just be obedient. Obedient. A lot of us are waiting for, you know, this magic uh, dust or something to come on me and God's going to give me everything I want. No. It's a process. It's a work. You're, you're a work in process. You know, that the good work he begun in you, be confident of this, it says, be confident of this thing, that the good work he begun in you, he's going to complete it to the day of Jesus Christ. You're still under construction. God is still building you up. God is still encouraging you. Even though you fight God, can I get an amen, church? Come on, amen. Well, you know, we don't say it with our mouth, but our, our, our minds and our actions, right? God says something like, huh, I'm going to the party anyway. You know, I don't care what you say. I ain't going to church. I'm going to go to the football game, you know. We've, we've, we've done a lot of us like that, amen? I'm going to go hang out with my fellas. No, you're supposed to be in church. I'm going with the fellas, mom. I don't care what you say. We got to learn to obey God. Amen? amen? So here it is. This is the, uh, uh, it's a new year that we have here. God has given us an opportunity. I don't know if you guys uh, realize that. I think, I, I know for myself, I can, I can speak that I'm so blessed to be here. In 2023, I am so blessed to stand here behind this pulpit and be in this church. Amen. When I walk here, you guys, I know you guys, some of you guys like say, oh, it's just church. It's, it's turning point fellowship. I don't think like that no more. <laughs> I am so grateful and so thankful that I have my life. And that he gave me a new life. I'm doing a, I'm doing a new thing, he said in me. Amen. He says, I'm going to do a new thing in you. He goes, can't you see it? Yes, sir. Come on. And he's doing it in every one of us. Amen. You just got to open up your eyes. Right. Open up your mind. Open up your ears to what God is doing. He's doing something new. He wants to change your life. Amen. I, don't, I don't want my old man, the old angel, I don't want him showing up nowhere. No longer. I, I, I don't want that in my life. 
I don't want him in my life. I want to be a whole different person. I, I used the word last, uh, last Sunday, a novelty. If you guys know what the word novelty means, it means new, being new, being brand new, being uh, unusual, something that's never been before. That's why you're unusual people. Every one of you are unusual people. The world may say, oh, you're weird. No, I'm not. I'm unusual. I'm only one of a kind, right? There's no other race. You're the only one. Edgar, you're the only one. There may be Edgar Robinson, uh, Rodriguez says all around, but you're the only one like you. Because I did. I looked up my name, Angel Baruch, because when I was younger, I did that when I was in my 20s. There was probably about 17 of us. Now, I'm like, oh, my God, where they all come from? You know, they're all called Angel Baruch from Mexico to Israel to New York to L.A. to San Francisco. I'm like, man, where do all these guys come from? Then I started looking at their pictures, and I go, and we're all different. And they all had different backgrounds. Some were locos. Some were business guys. You know, some rode bikes. You know, but God doing something in all our lives. Amen? Amen. So I want, to, I want to encourage you throughout this word today as we read it. I want you to read what the Lord says. And uh, I'm going to read uh, 16 through 19. Beatrice, I'm going to read uh, 16 through 19. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path through a mighty waters, the Red, the red Sea, and brings forth chari uh, uh, chariots and horse, army and the power. They shall lay down together and shall not rise. He's about to take them out. That's what he's saying. They're about to die. The ocean's about to be split right in half. They're about to go in there. This is God's plan. He's about to drown them because he's protecting his people, the Israels. And the same thing with us. God will protect us over the wicked. God will choose you over the wicked. I don't know if you understand that. I don't know if you know that. I know that. I've seen it before in my life. I've seen God remove people from my life, put them in a grave just by prayer. I didn't want them to die. My thing was to remove them from my life because they were giving us headaches and they were being ch chops and they were being disrespectful and I can't operate in the old fashioned where I would have just socked them up in his face, you know, and, but we can't do that stuff no more. Can I get an amen? amen. You guys, sometimes you got to run from that stuff. Right. I, I walked away and I ran away from that stuff like, no, 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 it ain't going to happen because I'm about this close to that, but I'm not. That's right. That's right. And this is what God did because they weren't going to, the Egyptians were not going to follow God. They had their God. So God is saying this. Who brings forth the chariots and the horns, the army and the power. They shall lay down together and they shall not rise. They are extinguished. They are quenched like a wick. You ever done that? Wet your fingers and turn out the, uh, a, a candle? That's what God did. Psst, you're no more. You're no more. He says, do not, he goes, do not remember the former things. That's what he's telling us here in 223. Amen. Do not for, uh, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. We talk too much about where we came from and who we were. Come on, come on, come on. All the things we did. Like if it was something that we were proud of. Now, now, we, now, we, now we're getting the message, amen? Because that's not nothing to be bragging about or be uh, proud of what we did in our past. Amen? God is doing something new, he said. Here it is. Verse 18. Behold, what's behold mean? Check it out. It says, check it out. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? God is doing something right now in every one of our lives. God is blessed through through 2022. When you guys thought you were going to quit, you thought you were going to give up, you thought you were going to lose your house, your car, whatever. You thought you were going to go to jail. I didn't get no amens from them guys, amen? Because I prayed for them, a lot of them, and, you know, 
All of us, we joined our, we agreed on it, and God did a work, right? You, there's not only one of you here. You guys know who I, you are. Amen? Because I, I, I prayed the same prayer before, too, myself. Amen? You know, you're looking at a little time, and all of a sudden you call out to God, and, <laughs> and we're really meaning it because we don't want to go. Amen? And he sets you free. And then we go right back to the mess, to the mess, I mean. Amen? Some of us. Amen? Got to stop that. Say, no, no more. You got to be able to have the no more inside of you. No more. Namas. No more. No more. I'm done. Jessica, I'm done. You got to say that. I'm done. We have to say that within ourselves. Teddy, I'm done. I'm done with you. Come on, Brianna. I'm done. I'm done with it. Huh, Joe, I'm done with this life. I'm done with, I'm, I'm starting my new life now. Today it starts, I'm telling you. Margaret, today I was going to say Margarita. Margaret, today it starts. Today your life starts. Forget about what we did yesterday or during the day today. Forget about that, Anna. Brand new today. When you leave this thing, this sanctuary, I, I felt it. I was loaded, I was stoned, I was messed up when I came to church. I was a, on a three-day bid, bin. I was messed up, and I was sitting right there in the front row at another church. And when they began to, to prophesy and lay hands on me, and he was telling me my whole life story, I'm like, my primo told this guy what's going on. <laughs> and, and as soon as he was done with the prophecy, I felt like, nauseated. I said, I got to get out of here. I went to the parking lot and I just stood out there during the whole service. And when he came out, I said, I don't know what happened, primo. I don't know what happened, but I'm sober, bro. I go, I'm dead sober. I was stoned when I walked in here. I said, I was using for three days straight. And God, excuse me, said, God released that. Amen. I go, I'm free. I said, I'm not I'm not tripping no more. And he says, you're sober. I said, yeah. And, and that was September 24th, 1994. I never used drugs or anything like that, alcohol or anything like that, ever again. By the, by the power of God. You know the power of God, Ralph. I was there when I seen the power of God move on his life. I seen, I seen God, just the spirit of God coming all over him. And he was... I, more just as messed up as I was. And then two years later, I'm talking to him. He goes, I've been straight pastor for two years now. I said, oh, <laughs> what, what God does, amen? What God does in our lives, if we would just allow him. Yes. You remember that sunshine when I saw you at the, at the uh, uh, Lakewood, right? Uh, where at the, yeah. When I saw her, she was tall. This girl, man, she used to be a pretty little girl, man. She was pretty because she was always younger than me. But now she's got all her beauty back, amen, inside and out, amen, in Jesus' name. What God has done. And this is what God is telling us here. Don't consider the old things. Behold, I will do a new thing, verse 19. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honor me, he says. The, ba the jackals and ostriches, uh, ostriches, because I give water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, I give drink to my people, my chosen. God has given every one of us a refresh, a refreshment, Amen. a brand new start. Yeah. God has chosen you. Don't think you're here by choice. God called you, James Goodman. And your last name is Goodman for a reason. Because you're a good man. And James called you for that. Every one of your names are called by God. He knows. It's written in the last book of life. Your name is there. All we got to do is just continue to follow. And you may fall. You may trip. You may get up. But you got to learn to dust yourself off. And let me keep on going. Because some of you roughnecks, some of you tough boys, you've been knocked down before, right? You've been socked in a job and socked in a gut and you fall down. Do you stay down and just let them whip on you? Heck no. I know I didn't. Like, oh, no, baby, we got to do this one more time, you know. 
you, you won this round, but we're going, we're going to do this one more time, you know. You get up. Same thing spiritually. If the enemy comes and he attacks and he messes with your mind, messes with your, your children and stuff, you get up and you, spray, and you praise God. That's your weapon. It's the weapon of your, of your praise, the weapon of your worship. It's powerful. If you could just put music on every day and just let it play. That's what was given to me as a, as a new Christian. My primo goes, just put the music on, on a Christian station. Do not take it off, angel. Just leave it on. I don't care if you go to work or not. Put it on loud for your neighbors can hear it and stuff. And I would. I just left it on. And I went to work for 8, 10 hours, come back, to, it's on. There's preaching, there's music, all that going on. But God was doing something in me. Amen. And God began to do that work that he hasn't finished yet. He never stops. And he's not going to stop. I tell you not to quit. Tell yourself, I won't quit. I'm not going to quit. You got to tell yourself, I'm not going to quit. It's going to get tough, but I'm not going to do it. You know how it is, Enrique, because I've talked to him many times too, where I want to quit. I'm done. I don't need this. No, you do. You need it. Because especially us, us, well, I'm, I'm way younger, way older than you guys. I'm saying way younger than you guys. I'm way older than you guys. Uh, To me, you know, I, I said, they're kind of soft, these 30-year-olds, you know, these 20-year-old guys. They're kind of soft guys to me. But, you know, you, you got to get tough as a Christian. You, you got to get tough. As a Christian, not as a man. Not putting your fist on somebody or cussing your wife off or cussing your husband off. None of that. Change your life. Amen. Be gentle. Be kind. Yes. Be joyful. When's the last time you smiled just because you were happy? Not because she made you happy, because God is inside of you. Amen? I know some of you guys have been married a long time. You're like, Sm smile? What does that mean? No. <laughs> we smile. Amen? It's a new year. It's a new year, people. The good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to tell you guys something. I, I wrote these notes right here as God was just speaking to me throughout the two and a half months that I was in the bed at home and I was hurting. God just began to speak to me. I began to pray and I began to read my word and begin to pray in tongues. I was praying more tongues than I was speaking in English. I was just praying in tongues for you who are, are uh, born you know, with, with uh, the evidence of speaking in tongues. Uh, you can have it if you want it. It's not, you know, people say, oh, it's not for everybody. Let it not be for the other people, but let it be for you. Just ask the Lord. Father, feel me. And he'll do it because when it, I started doing it, I was in a warehouse putting away heater stuff away. And all of a sudden I started singing to the Lord and then I started singing in, 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 uh, my, in tongues. And I didn't sound very pretty, you know, it was all messed up. Even now when I sing, it's, but I knew that God had did something in my life. Amen. Amen. So it's a new thing. This is God, this is God talking to you right here, what I wrote down. God says, I want to bless you. I want to do something new in your life. I want to give you a fresh start, a new beginning, angel. And this was, this was given to me. I think it was like in middle of September when God told me he was going to do something new in my life. And then when we started doing the, uh, the meetings for the conference up at the mountain with the men, Tony, uh, Andy is one of my right-hand men there. He says, God is going to do something new in your life, Pastor. Brand new. Not nothing old, nothing uh, refreshed. No, it's going to be fresh, brand new, novelty. And God's going to do it for every one of you. Amen. If you just receive it, if you just receive it, you can just say, Lord, bless me with a new, with a new life. He will. He'll begin to think different. You'll begin to think different. Your words will begin to change. Huh? All of a sudden, they're going to look at you like, man, she's uh, kind of nice now. 
You know? Amen? You know, I'm not saying that you ever mean or anything like that. But we can always be nicer. Amen? We can all be nicer to each other. Can I get an amen? Give me a smile right there. Sis. Amen. There you go. Amen. We want to bless the Lord. So this is what he says. He says, in the beginning of this new year, we're, we're, custom, we're, custom, uh, customer, we're, we're customary, we're, we're accustomed to uh, thinking of new things. Every, every uh, year that's coming up, right, once it's coming new, uh, new Year's, we start thinking about losing weight. We think about eating healthy, right? We think about we're not going to cuss no more. You know, I'm not going to listen to that kind of music anymore. And how long does it last? Five days, five hours, five days, five weeks? It does. It doesn't last long because we're trying to do it through our own power. But when we do it through God, God gives you the strength to last and go through it. Can I get an amen? Because without the Holy Ghost, you wouldn't even be sitting right here. Can I get an amen? A lot of us could not. Wouldn't I think every one of us would not be here if it wasn't up to the Holy Spirit. He's the one that's kept us. And you'll say, I don't know the Holy Spirit. That's how amazing he is. He don't even know you when he saves you. <laughs> amen? Uh, put up uh, lim limitations uh, 323, Miha. Limitations. It's not on the schedule. I'm sorry. Limitations 323. The truth is that with God, every time is a, is a new time. Every time with God is a brand new beginning. Every time. I want you guys to know that. Uh, Lamentations. There it is. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. He's talking about God's mercies. A lot of us don't even cry out for mercy no more. The church today doesn't cry out for mercy. When you're hurting and you need God, mercy, Lord, mercy. I cried out all kinds of times, mercy through this time. When they told me how dangerous to, to open up my, my, uh, uh, no, uh, my, was it, say it again? Carotic. Yeah, my carotic uh, uh, artery. It's, it's dangerous. He says, I touch your nerves. If I touch your nerves, one little band, he goes, I could mess your face up. He says, if I touch this other nerve, he goes, I could mess your hands up. I could mess up your mind. I said, wow. He goes, so we got to be very careful when we do this. I said, man, he goes, one little, one little mistake, one, I too, <laughs> my whole life could have been changed. You know what I mean? They couldn't, and they couldn't bring it back. But by the grace of God, here we are today. Even every one of us here, right? Amen. You were married before. Some of those guys were ugly. They were mean. Some of you women were ugly and mean too. Amen. Come on, I ain't getting no amens from the ladies. Right now. No, I was always beauty. <laughs> Says, because his compassions fell not, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God is faithful. God's love. Remember, there's nothing, nothing that can separate us from the love of God. I, I, I brought that up on Sunday, uh, Romans 8, 38 through 39, if you're taking Notes, Romans 8, chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. That nothing can separate you from the love of God. I'm not saying that, you know, for some people that say, oh, well, God loves me, then I can do whatever I want to do. No, there's a price for you. You can't do whatever you want to do. You can't do it when you want to do it. We have to do it according to God's will. Line up, amen? We have to line up. We'll mess up. And we'll miss it, but you know what? Ask for forgiveness and keep going. God's love covers a multitude of sin, the Bible says. Whatever sin you've done, God's love will cover it. I know so many men here that the love of God is the one that set them free. God loved me so much that hell had to leave. Bitterness had to leave. Jealousy had to leave. Anger had to leave because of the love of God. And I know some of you guys never had those trips. You know, you never had an anger trip or, you know, a jealous trip. You know, uh, you're lying if you're saying about jealous. Because uh, I think every one of us, 
has some jealousy in us, and that's why we need Jesus. Amen. All right, thank you for the amen right over here. All of us need the Lord to help us. Amen. amen. Isaiah 43, 16. Isaiah 43, 16 and 17. Yeah. Isaiah 43, 16 and 17. God made new things. God made everything new for us. Here it is in 16 and 17. I'm going to read it to you. And you're going to see when he reads it. Uh, it says, thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea. There was no way, but God made it. And for most, most of us, there was no way for us, but God made it for us. Amen. A path through the mighty waters who brings forth the chariots and the horse, the army and the power. They shall lay, lay down together. They shall not rise. They are extinguished. They are quenched like a wick. And that's how it is for every one of us. God is giving the Israelites a brand new start. He's getting rid of all of his enemies. And if you read it, what did he say? You see the, uh, uh, the uh, Egyptians who are coming after you? You'll never see them again. And that's how it is. When we want to live for God and follow God, you'll never drink again. Amen. You'll never sin. You'll never go back and live in a, 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 a adultery, fornication. You won't do that. Because God is going to begin to do a new work in you. That's right. That's right. That's good. And you can start today. Yeah. Your life could start. You can say no. So you know what? We're not going to do this no more. Right. You know? Even if you live together, you know what? You're going to the sofa, my brother, and I'm staying over here because you're too much of a temptation for me. And vice versa. Come on, man. We're, come on, let's be real, man. Come on. I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm going to step way over here. The flesh rises. And you may think, oh, no, no, no. No, it does. The, the temptation of it, the lust of it. Amen. And we got to learn how the, how the, 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 uh, the sermon of God, when things come up, that you know what? I'm not going to live that way. I used to cuss a lot. I mean, cuss. Pastor used to cuss. And I would belittle women all day long. All day long. Because I was so hurt and so bad for what has done, things that were done to me by women. I would think less of them. I wouldn't blame myself because I was doing the same thing they was doing. But they was worse than me, you know. And God began to say, you need to change. You need, you need to change your heart. And as I begin to read the word, as I begin to pray, God began to change my heart. And you begin to look at women as they are, beauty. And I'm not talking about the outside. You ladies think it's all about the outside. It ain't. It's the inside because you can be all pretty and all sassy looking and all that stuff. You know what I mean? But your character and your attitudes at times could be stinky. And you men too. You men too. It can be all Mr. Q, you know, Q, what do they call them? Q what? QGs. You right? QGs? No? Okay. GQ. GQ? Kelvo. <laughs> GQs, you know, uh, you think you're, you know, you're all that and, and you're not. We have to change. We have, no, I'm, not, I'm not saying go look all raggedy either. You know, we got to change. We got to change the way we dress, the way we look and all that. But once the inside starts working, because when God starts working on the inside, it starts showing on the outside. You all of a sudden you're wearing a nice collared shirt. All of a sudden, you're wearing a, a, a sweater. You know, you're done with the T-shirts that are halfway out this way, you know, bagging and everything. All kinds of manchas and everything on and stuff like that, you know. You, you know, you start saying, like, I don't need that. I started throwing T-shirts away. I probably got, like, eight drawers of T-shirts. And I just look at them like, that's old. That's old. That's old. You just got to start throwing away some stuff. Right? Just like us. We got to get rid of some stuff in our lives, in our spirit, man, in our character. You know, so some of you like to gossip. 
I got two men saying amen when sitting there with the women. <laughs> but, you know, men, men gossip too. But women, you know, if you got a comadre or a friend that you know right away, she gets on the phone like, hey, did you hear about, you know, uh, uh, think of a name uh, that no one has. Fulana, there you go. Thank you. Did you hear about Fulana and this and that? Stop. No, no, I don't want to hear about Fulana. I want to talk about Jesus. I had to do that. I had to do that with men and women. Like, hermana, don't call me to, to gossip. You know, I'm not going to do that. I'm not a pastor. I'm going to sit here and gossip with you? I said, we're going to get in trouble here. You know what I mean? And they throw little bites out there, you know. Even when you tell them no, all of a sudden, like, but did you hear this? I'm like, man, didn't you just hear what I said? I'm not going to do that no more. You know, in Jesus' name, amen? amen? And we begin to live a new life in Christ. So here, here he's telling them that, in verses 16 and 17 of Isaiah 43, that he's going to get rid of his enemies and everything's going to become new. God takes care, uh, takes care of our affairs as men. He takes care of that for us. God will take care of your business. When you take care of God's business, he takes care of your business. If you ain't taking care of God's business, don't expect God to take care of your business. Got one right there. Praise the Lord. I'm going to preach over here, right here. Amen. No, because, you know, we ask God for all kinds of things, and then God asks us for one thing. We ain't doing it. You know, he say, hey, why don't you give me that nice suit? Give it to a brother there over here that I want to bless a brother. Oh, no, no. I, I paid $300 for that suit. He ain't asking you for how much you paid for it. Do you want to give it away? God will ask you for your best. Every one of us. He'll ask you for your best in your character and your person and who you are, your attitude. That's why a lot of you, I say, smile. If you're, if you're, if you're a person that's close to me, close to me, I'm always going to say, smile. Amen. Take that poochie face off of you. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're part of the church. You should be smiling. You're a Christian. You're born again. Your name's written in the last book of life. What are you sad about? What are you all poochie face about? So what? He's a jerk. Let him be a jerk. You just smile. Amen. Amen. So what? She's a poochie face. You just keep smiling. Amen. 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 No, know your, no, know your, your wife. Know your husband. Yes. If you know they're not a morning person, don't be around them, man. From afar. When was he asked? <laughs> There's some eggs and some coffee right there. I'm going downstairs. You go ahead and have at it. Amen, or have at it. I'm going upstairs, you know, until you learn how to work it out. But we got to learn to work it out, amen? amen? I don't know where that came from, but it came. <laughs> we, we must learn to uh, uh, be dependent on God in this new year. A lot of us don't depend on God. We depend on our comadres, on our friend, our dog. Let me call my dog, but my dog knows what to say. He's going to go along with you. He ain't going to tell you what you want to hear. I mean, he's going to tell you what you want to hear. He doesn't want to tell you the truth because then he ain't going to be a friend no more. But if he's a good friend, he's going to tell you the truth. Amen? I, I hang around with people telling me the truth, and it hurts. It hurts. And I'm their pastor, and they're going to, boom, still give me a little gut shot. But you learn. Amen? God will take us to places of dependency. We need to be dependent upon God. Amen? Amen? And when we learn to depend on God, not lean on your own understanding, but with all your heart, trust in the Lord, he directs your path. Amen? When we do that, I learned that in, in the times of, 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 of the surgeries. You know, they, they were getting me prepped. I was going through tests and all this and that. And they were telling me, You're gonna, you need a new valve. You're going to need a new valve. You're not going to make it. You're going to die. If you don't take this valve, you're going to die. And I'm like, oh, my God, man. I said, these people, what a trip, you know. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I need a valve. I need a valve. Yeah, I'm going to say yeah, you know, because you got to sign all kinds of paperwork and everything. <laughs> but I wasn't putting my trust in God. I was putting my trust in the man and the horse, horses and the chariots, but not God. And God began to break my heart. And it's a beautiful heart. It, 
broken. If you know God, he breaks your heart very quietly, very softly. It's like, I'm killing you softly. You guys ever heard that song by, by Roberta so, uh, Flat? You guys ever heard that? Sing that song. Now you guys got to think about it now. Amen. <laughs> He was doing that to me, and, and I learned that I can't trust nobody. I can't. No one can do nothing for me. No one. No one could do nothing for me. Not the surgeon. He's going to tell me he's going to do his best and this and that. My life was in his hands. It was in nobody else's hands. But God's on it. So I began to trust God. And I began to read scriptures on, on God's faithfulness. On God's truthfulness. And he began to minister to me. He began to talk to me by myself. She's at work and the son's at work. I'm home by myself for 10, 12 hours a day. Tell me God ain't trying to get my, my attention. Because <laughs> sometimes he separates us, right? To get you undivided attention. And, and we want to go hang out with somebody. And God says, no, I don't want you over there. I want you by yourself. I want Fred. I need Fred here. And God says, no, I want to speak to you on that. I don't want to speak to Fred right now. I want to speak to you. And that's what he does, Eddie. Separate you from all the homeboys and all the friends and all that. You ain't got the answer, bro. The answer for my life, the way I want to live, and I want to live with my family and stuff, Jesus is the answer. There's no other answer. It ain't the neighborhood. It ain't a 45. It ain't a Glock. It ain't that. We've had all that stuff. That doesn't work. God works. Amen. So he began to do that to me, and I began to trust him, and I learned to trust. And I still got a long, long way to go. Don't think I've arrived. I haven't. Long way to go. Amen. And when we learn to begin to trust God, he creates for us, his people, a new beginning, new blessings to start with a fresh start. We must learn to be on, we must learn to trust God and his faithfulness. We must learn to trust his spirit when he speaks to us, his word, and his love. I would write that down if I, if I were taking notes. Learn to trust God's faithfulness, the Holy Spirit, his word, which is the living word, and his love. When you learn to do that, you're going to learn to walk with God. A lot of you will tell me, I know God. And I would, and I would speak to you. Because I did this about four days ago. They told me they knew God. I said, tell me something about God. Tell me about Jesus. You tell me. We should be able to we should be able to talk about our best friend. Amen. Come on. What is your name? I'm sorry, Ralph, your, your fiancé, what's her name? Steph. Another Steph. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she's saying that. <laughs> when I talk to you, you should be able to tell me things, good things about her. Yes, her character. She's kind. She's giving. You know, she'll, she'll at a drop of a line, she a uh, drop of a bucket, a uh, dime, she'll, she'll go and buy something for somebody. She'll go around the block and come back and find that homeless person and give to them. You know, something, right? We should be able to tell them that they're nice, they're sweet, they're kind. They're strong. Amen, yeah. They're strong. She's a strong woman. Because the strong doesn't mean they're, they're, they're grouchy or he's strong. No, he just doesn't know how to control it yet. Or she doesn't know how to control that strength yet. Because God has given you, every one of you, strength, but you got to learn how to walk in it. Amen. And God will teach you that. Amen. And for you that are, uh, the men I'm speaking to right now, that are hardheads and deadpools and gangsters and all that, you'll think that, oh, no, they're going to look at me like I'm a weak scene, you know, weaking. They're going to look at me like I'm a sissy. No, you're learning to be gentle in the spirit. Yes. Yes. Imagine if, you're, if, if your wife, or your girlfriend would say, the first thing I ask you, tell me something about Edgar. Oh, he's a gentleman. I'd probably fall down. You know, boom, oh, my God. You know. I'm not saying he isn't, but, you know, it's, 
for most of us, we're not, you're not going to say that the first thing about Enrique, right? What's about Enrique? You know, then, you know who, who, who is he? Yeah, probably say that. Oh, he works hard. You know, does five jobs, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> you know, but God's character, God, Jesus' character, what do you know about him? I want you to go home and think about that. Because if pastor comes and talks to you, Jesus, you know, you would, should be able to tell me, God is like this to me. Amen. God is my best friend. He's kind. Amen. He understands me when I blow it and, I'm, and I sin. He forgives me. Yes, he he's love. Yes, sir. He's just. The way he speaks to me, he's kind. He doesn't call me stupid, idiot. You fool, you know, you fool. You're no good for nothing. God doesn't do that stuff. That's man. That's flesh. If you're using that kind of word with your kids and stuff like that, repent. Repent right now. Say you're, you're sorry to your children and sorry to God. If you talk to each other in that same manner, say, I'm sorry. I apologize. That's a man. That's a woman. It's a woman that can stand up and say, I apologize. I blow it. And don't, don't, don't expect no, no uh, oh, it's okay. No, no, no. It's not okay. If someone does wrong to you, it's not okay. Oh, pow, I slapped her. Huh, I'm sorry. It's okay. It, it's okay, Boba. <laughs> it's not okay. It's not okay to lay your hands on other people. It's not. We're new people in Christ Jesus. Amen? I'm going another way, Lord. Don't look back. You know, I'm trying to get these little ice skate things. I'm going to be done right now, mijo. Don't look back. Today is the beginning of a new life, a new way, a new attitude. This is it, right? Amen? Do not look back. Isaiah 43, 18. Put that up, yeah, please. There it is. Do not remember the formal things nor consider the things of old. We're not even to think about those old things. Not even to bring those things up. Oh, you said this, you said that. Forget all that stuff. It's old. It's done. After today, it's done. Even today, it's done. Be new in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've never been nice before, make today nice. Amen. If you're sarcastic, stop it. It stops today. You want to bag on somebody? I'm not doing that no more. Because if someone bagged on your mama, someone bagged on your daddy, they were fighting words where I come from. Talk, you talk about my mama, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. You done went wrong now, brother. You went sideways. You know, you start thumping just for words. And the Lord and the enemy will do that for us. Amen? He'll do that. The enemy will. Philippians 3, I'm going to finish right here. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Thank you guys there at Turning Point. I mean, at Turning Point at uh, YouTube and uh, Turning Point, yeah, Facebook. Thank you. Philippians 3. We're not to look back. We're not to look at formal things. We're about to walk in our new life. It's only five days old. Some of you guys already probably blew it every single day. You know, woke up messing it up. You know, amen. Lunchtime, you broke it. You know what I mean? She, she fixed you lunch and you threw it away and she saw you, you know. Where's my, uh, 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 tenop what do you call it? T-A-P-P-E-R-W-A-R-E. -E. I can spell it. Tupperware, thank you. Because <laughs> it's something that happened to me, that's why I'm spelling. You know, Tupperware. Uh, uh, we, we throw it away. Oh, we give it, oh, we give it away. <laughs> guilty, guilty. I'm raising my hand. Guilty. Amen? Done that. They do it out of their heart and out of their love, and we're like, mm, again, I had this last night. Boom. You know? I'm going to go get the pastrami and the french fries, something fresh, something hot. You know? Amen? But he says, brother, I do not count myself to apprehend it, to already laid my hand on it. He's saying, in other words. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Forget about what's already happened in your life. Forget about it, Victor. Say, forget about it. Come on, say, forget about it, Anna. Amen. We got to do that. Amen. 
Forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forward. We got to keep going forward, reaching for what? Those things which are ahead. One more. I press toward the goal to, for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Stay right there. This is what we're to do. We're to be more like Christ every single day. We're not to look back and wreck our, our future because of our past. Some of you guys are still stuck in the, the first marriage, the second marriage, the third marriage. Yeah, stuck with them vatos, you know, and like they did you good. And, oh, he was a good guy. Uh, uh, he was nice. Then why is he out on the, on the sideline? We have to learn to reach for the, for the, cry, for the uh, call in Christ Jesus, the goal in Christ Jesus, amen, for that calling. We have to do that. It's a work. It's a process. When you blow it, Forgive me, Father, I've blown it. When you're a jerk, I'm a jerk. I've said that to God all kinds of times. Both hands. Father, I'm a jerk, man. I'm always blown it, Lord. As a pastor, I'm saying that. You guys who are saints and all that stuff, they don't say that stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, hey, bust your, bust your bubble, man. But we do it, even you ladies too, right? If you don't do it with your husband because you're afraid of him, but you'll do it with the kids. Get in the kid's face and all that. You're so stupid. You're so slow. It's like you're retarded. Imagine telling your kids that kind of stuff. Are you lame or what? Oh, that's a great, that's a great uh, uh, courage word to give them, you know. I'm sure they're going to say, oh, yeah, I surely want to make up my, word, uh, my, my bed now, Dad. Sure I do. After that? No. They can't even find themselves for an hour or two hours. Mentally, emotionally. Amen? Because the things we say, the things we do. So he says, I press toward the, uh, the goal for the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. Let me just read my notes here and we're done. That's the last scripture I'm reading. I wrote this down. I don't know why I wrote this down today. I was reading my notes. I wrote this. It's okay to look back. And I'm like, hmm, why did I write that? Just to remember how far God has brought us, how far he's moved us. We don't look back to look at the oldies or the ex-wives and the life that we had at one time. It's a whole new life now. And you look back, I do, I look back 29 years I turned 29 years old as a Christian this year. 29 years I, fo I followed the Lord Jesus Christ. And I look back at those 29 years and say, man, where God has brought me from, what God has done for me, how can I not be grateful and thankful? Even as a Christian, things that were supposed to happen to us didn't happen to us. You guys don't, some of you ladies here, you don't even know the men that look at you guys that are out there in the world. You don't even know their thoughts. You don't even know if they're evil men. You don't even know. I don't need no man. I take care of myself. Walk like a dude and everything. I want to go. <laughs> you can't take care of yourself. When it's a man that can't, you can't. You think, oh, I can take him. They're like 10 times stronger than, than you guys, what men are. When they get angry and everything's up, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. So be, be a lady. If the Lord says obey your husband, obey your husband. And men, if the, if the Bible says honor your man, honor your man. You got to do that. Some of you guys never even knew what honor is. You don't even know honor. Really, really. You think you know honor, but you know no honor. You have no honor even over your body, over yourself, or even other, other people. And the same thing, you know, the same thing with women. You're supposed to honor your man. So what? He's a, you know, I don't want to 
say that word, but you know, uh, you say the jerk, you know, so what, he's a jerk. You got to honor him. And you know what a woman wants? A man wants respect. That's honor, right? Ted and Eddie, right? Respect. Give me some respect. Give me respect. You know, that's my son. My son, when he first got out, the first, that's all he ever said all day. Dad, you better show you, you watch yourself, Dad. You, know, you got to show me some respect, you know? I'm like, why are you standing like that? Stand right, <laughs> you know? Don't do that stuff. That's dumb. I have respect. I said, you earn respect. You don't just get respect by laying hands on people. You show respect to a person. That's what a man wants, respect. What does a woman want? Who knows? Look, at the men know. That's good that they know. You ladies should know that. You mean? You tell him, I want love. I'm not talking about sexual. That's sexual. That's something different. I'm talking about love. An honor, respect. Opening up the, hand, the, the, the uh, doors. You know, I can pick up the dishes too. Because some of us were raised so, so old-fashioned, so backwards, we can't even wash dishes because I'm a man. Whoever said you can't do that? I, don't, I never wrote, read that right here in the Bible. Man, who has to wash dishes? Never read that, you know? No, it's respect. My wife cooks, and when she starts cooking, I'm like, oh, don't pull that, that, pat, that uh, pot out, that P-O-T pot. Don't bring that pot out. Don't, don't, don't. It's a big one. I'm going to be on that thing for like five, ten minutes. Don't do it. I'm thinking about washing them already. She ain't even used it yet, but she's pulling them out. I'm like, oh, darling, please, no. You know? And when it's all done, man, I look at the table, the kitchen, I'm like, oh, my God. No, I got to clean this thing. Because my thing for Pastor Angel in my house Ada, is leave it as if you were never there. You leave your living room, you leave your bed like if you were never in the room. You make up your bed, clean your, your uh, living room like if no one was ever there. Where that way you don't be embarrassed when people come in or walk into your house and knock on a door. Can I come in? Like, and you're like... Hey, no, you can't go into my house. Are you crazy or what? You know, God goes all over your, your underwear, all over the place, and everything. You're like, oh my God! Yeah. Oh, ex- excuse the house. There ain't no excuse to it. And and men too, men too, right? If you know to do it, do it. I teach my son that. If you see something on the ground, pick it up. If the, if the rugs are all messed up, straighten them out, man. What's the, what's the problem here? Why do I got to straighten out the rugs all the time in the, in the restroom that him and I use? You know what I mean? Wipe down the, the mirror, brother. Make it clean. Make it, you know, I hate to see mirrors, all kinds of spots on it. Look there, you think you got measles. You're looking at the thing. <laughs> hey, man, I'm coming back. Thank you. A man wants respect and honor. You respect that man no matter what. You you begin to teach Victor that, Judy. Teach him how to respect and honor you, his sisters. But with 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 actions, not you know, not with just the, the mouth. And you teach how to teach how to honor your your mother and I mean teach you how to love your your mom. You probably love her, and I know you do. Because you will go to jail for your, your mama. But that ain't the thing. Your mom is for you to live for your mama. Amen. That's right. That's right. Live for her. Love on her. Someone disrespecting her. Hey, bro, there ain't no cussing in the house. That's my mama, you, you know. I had to do that many times for my wife, for my daughter, Sandra. You're not going to talk like that, bro, my my daughter's right here. She's right in front of me. Bro, you can't use that kind of language. I'm like, what? I said, you heard me. I'm not going to do that, bro. You're not going to do that. Right. Just don't say nothing then. If you can't, you can't say nothing right, don't say, nothing, don't say nothing at all. We have to learn how to honor one another in this new, world, in this new year that we're entering. We're new people now. Amen. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. 
I, I, I would like to see all the couples that are here and stuff like that. I, I want you to blow pastor's mind one day. That as you walk in, I want to see you holding hands. You know, I don't want to see one over there and one over here. I don't want to see that. Boom. Come together. It's got to come together. We, we got to learn that stuff. I, I like that you sit by each other, you know. That's how it's supposed to be. We're supposed to sit by each other. Amen? Amen. When my wife was coming to this church, she didn't sit over there and sit right next to each other. And I would be teed off at her. I'd be, she'd be teed off at me. But you still, because you, you, you love her and she honors you, she'll do that. For all of us, amen? Not just for a couple, every one of us. It's a good exercise to do. Be by your, be by your, your, your mom. Do that. Can you do that? I'm sure you can, right? When's the last? They got closer. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know, that uh, uh, we could love one another. And it takes work. It takes time. And don't put that stuff on, 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 on Facebook. When you're going through feather, when you're going through all kinds of stuff, man, do not. I see you guys are like, why? Why? You're a Christian. Why would you put your business out there? And then, I don't know, Pastor, what, that's what they told me. Pastor, I don't know why everybody knows my business. <laughs> really? You don't ask for prayer for that brother, for that sister, for that sister, and that. And ten people all know your business. And ten of them are going to tell somebody else, now there's 20. And those 20 are going to tell another ten, that's 30. In the church. And you're wondering why they're looking at you all funny and sideways. <laughs> Don't put that stuff out there. Put love out there, man. Be that new person in Christ Jesus. Even if you don't mean it, say it for right now. Because by faith, you, you say the things to be not as if they were. By faith. I love her. My best friend. Arena's uh, Arena uh, mom wrote a little note of her, a little bio of her daughter. Or was it for Christmas, for your birthday, or would you just because she loved you? Oh, it's awesome. The, the mother just wrote all this stuff about, his, about her daughter just to appreciate her who she was. Imagine if we could do that for each other, huh? If you could just, you know, eat. Even if she doesn't even receive it, you just wrote it down anyway. Imagine that, huh? Leonard be going to smile every morning. You know, like, praise be God. Amen. <laughs> Amen? All of us would. I would be too, you know? We learn how to appreciate one another and love one another. Amen? Right, Joe? Learn to do that. All right. I went a little longer than I wanted to. I'm, st I'm still practicing to get to my 35, 40 minutes. Amen. Uh, let's pray. Let's stand in Jesus' name. A new beginning. Turn to your neighbor and say, we have new beginnings. New beginnings. Amen. That's what it's all about. And you fall down, I got a new opportunity to be brand new again. Amen. I fall down, I get up. There's a song we used to sing, uh, Steph, back in the days. We fall down, but we get up. We fall. We used to sing that song all the time at the church. Yeah, that's a beautiful song. Who used to sing that? What's his name? No, it wasn't that. There you go. Who? Donnie McCart. Yeah, he sang that song. If you guys want to hear it, we fall down, but we get up. You men. It's beautiful. It's it's a good move. It's a good uh, uh, CD. Father, I love you. I bless you for who you are, Lord God, not for what I desire or what I want, Lord God. I love you that you are my God. The God who forgives, Father, the God who protects protects, Father, the God who provides every one of our needs. I thank you for the word today, that it fell on good ground, Lord. 
fertile, fertile ground, Father, good grounded. When the seed falls, Lord, it'll produce fruit, your fruit in their lives. Change will come. Seasons will come. Times will come. But your word, Father, will never fail. It'll never stop. Your word will always be forever. So we thank you and we bless you for the word that's in our hearts, that we've hidden in our hearts, that we would not sin against you, Lord. That we would bless you. We would honor you. And we would love you even more than our wives and even more than our husbands, Lord. Because if we learn to love you, we'll learn to love them. But we must learn to love you first, Father. Teach us. Teach us to love one another. Teach us to be a blessing to one another, I pray, Lord God. I pray for every minister that ministered today in music, Father, and media, and sound, and ushers, Father, armor bearers, teachers, nursery workers. I thank you, Father, for the greeters, Lord. I thank you for every one of them that put their hearts, Father, toward you, Lord. And I pray for everyone that is here, hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, not bad news. They got good news, Lord, that today's the beginning of the rest of their life, that they'll be changed. They'll be different, Father, from step to step, from faith to faith, and from glory to glory. Our lives will be changed. Change our, our minds, Lord God, and our lives will be changed. Transform our lives through the power of the work of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Forgive us our sins, Father, if we sinned against anybody, if we did any wrong to anyone, Lord God, in Jesus' name. I pray that we would ask for forgiveness to you and to that person, and we could be free today. I pray, Father, for our children that are next door, the youth that are upstairs, Lord, that you would divinely protect them wherever they go that the wicked ones will be removed from their lives, Lord God, and angels will be camped about them, protecting them and watching over them. I thank you and I bless you for their lives. I thank you for the joy and the laughter, Lord. I thank you for every home that is full of love and joy and, kind and kindness, Lord. And for that home that isn't, Father, I pray that it would start today. When they get home, Father, they're going to be kind people loving people, forgiving people, Lord, operating by the Spirit of God. So I thank you and I bless you, Father, for no accidents, no breakdowns, no flat tires, Father, not even a ticket, just a safe passage home to and from this place. And tomorrow morning when we awaken, Lord, we can truly say, thank God it's Friday. And we can bless you, Father all our ways and all that we do today and forevermore. I pray and I thank you for this church, Turning Point Fellowship and their families. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Don't, don't forget, man, Saturday we have our men's meeting. Invite a friend, invite a brother or sister that Saturday, this Saturday. Rain or, or, or no rain, we're going to have it anyway. It's breakfast, so men, cook some breakfast. Don't expect, oh, I think they're cooking, huh? You're cooking for them, right? Yeah, I'm cooking. Okay. You guys can bring waters, uh, sodas, chocolate, whatever you want to bring, uh, tortillas, whatever you want to bring.